Truck is XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Yeah, we can probably hold up for 40 minutes, maybe, if anything. If not, then I'll just cut it to two. The jury's contentions. I'm a man of logic. Me and Havoc consider all the evidence and the defendant must logically be guilty. I do agree the gas is far far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid paying. The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal. Gas is. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Truth be told, the tea in my wife serves up for me is a little sketchy at times. If nothing else past the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? I'm gonna put the queen bee and her little bull peep against each other. That's all I'm thinking of. But well, never mind. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter argument was as, as unassailable as we hope. And Mr. Shamsir was poisoned. There can be no doubt of that. Then how are we supposed to turn this around? I think we need to establish the method by which Mr. Shamsir was actually poisoned. Our only hope is to demonstrate that the court in control of Erdely, but but that's only almost impossible at this stage. If we don't manage, though, Mr. Nasprey will will be found guilty. No delays, counsel. Proceed with the summation examination. Here we go. So my first thought is, I do agree that gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man want, would want to evade point paying it. Then they to, yo, I'm just gonna make a guess. If I had to change a little thing, okay. But if I'm just gonna make, I'm gonna put a random guess because it's most likely I have to press for, for more detail as to why they want to do that. But we're gonna do this. We're just cause, for no damn reason. Yeah, that's... There it is. I knew it. Okay. Okay, enough of that. Back to this. Back to this. My only logic is because she thinks that... Blah, blah, blah. It's expensive. And then she's the one that's in charge of the gas, so... Back to this. Hold it. This isn't the time or the place to be discussing the price of gas, madam. But really, think of the injustice. Air is a gas, and air is free. Why should Alamon gas cost money? It is, makes my blood boil. I can feel myself becoming more ruthless than ever. This isn't the time or the place to be ruthless either. If I might interject here. Ah, uh, yes, madam. It seems my fellow juror takes issue with the price our company charge for gas. But it's precisely because of thieves like this man that the cost goes up. Oh, what a beastly man. That's unkept mustache, those hundred. Hunch soldiers poisoning team and stealing gas? Only forgivable. No, 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 Mr. Nutsman isn't the one who's been stealing gas. I'll thank you not to go adding on one more crimes. Mr. Nutsman hasn't been poisoning tea either. Well, anyway, I've quite made up my mind. It's as I made up the price of gas. Back! The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's lethal Holy. gas is. You, can we? Could we please talk about the poison rather than gas? Do you think, sir? Well, if you like. I mean, to be honest, I take poison over gas any time. You take poison? What I mean is, poison can only poison you. It doesn't explode, does it? Goodness me! What are you talking about? Send him straight, please, lawyer man. Well, it's certainly true that poison is prone to exploding. But I think you will find poison can also can light or heat up a room. Uh. You're all right. I hadn't considered that at all. Young lawyer man. Um, yes? You have a good head of your shoulders. We could use someone like you as our company's legal representative. Well, I wasn't expecting to pick up more business in the middle of a trial, that's for sure. Anyway, the point is I haven't had the best experience with gas companies in the past. Gas doesn't come for free. It's cost fortune delivered. Can we please refrain from all this talk of gas? There's an all-out attack underway here in case you had a notice against my company's gas. I'm supposed to sit here and take it, am I? I don't think so. She's really buzzing now. All I've heard about our wonderful field is explosion and poison. Ooh! I think we got it. I 
nothing. We got it. And the explosion could hardly be described as nothing, madam. Nevertheless, the theft of your gas is deplorable. My point exactly. But the gas thieves aren't even the voice of our enemies. We have far more devious rebarates to contend with on a daily basis, you know. More devious? Who, madam? Other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies? Not quite what I was expecting. We generate gas and we deliver it on to our customers, fair and square. Indeed, nobody's questioning that, madam. Altamont is extensively gas company. But there are others unscrupulous gas companies here in London that don't even have gas at all. What? But if they don't have gas, how do they go selling pe about to people? You wouldn't think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, you see, and sell that. They steal your gas? How on earth is such a thing impossible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's homes via a network of pipes. But these devious re re reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert our gas into their own rotten pipes. Then they make a contract with the household supplied by those pipes. Okay, I think we get the point now. Move on because this has nothing to do with where we're at. Ay, ay, ay. Why do we have to press on her? Okay, we get it. Oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. Excuse me. Do you have something to say about that, Jordan number three? Oh, golly, you mean me? I'm terribly sorry. I was just thinking to myself. I really did catch him off guard there. Thinking about what the lady next to you was saying, correct? Well, yes. I just got a little riled up about recently, you see. Go on. An Ultima guest worker visited my house the other day to investigate the pipe work. We need to ask for your cooperation while we carry out a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. So I let him in, and do you know what he did? I'm uh, afraid I have no idea. Please tell us. He proceeded to take one of my lights off the wall. Then he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. What? You're giving away company secrets there. Oh, please, everybody knows, but it was very near the death of me. I can tell you. What do you mean? I'll explain if you don't mind. As I said before, these unscrupulous other gas companies connect their customers to our pipe network. Yes, but how does blowing into the pipes come into it? Obviously, there's gas in the pipes and it's at fairly low pressure. By blowing air through the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporary. And if you do that, any light connected to the same pipe will flicker for a moment. Ah, I see. In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe, the lights of an adjacent property has no contract with your company flicker. You can now know that these severe scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. It's the reason why we have teams of workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which light flicker. The trouble is, the practical worker who came to my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down the pipe with all his might, and you can guess what happened, can't you? He faint. He blew hard then. Wait, you mean... That's right, the lights didn't just flicker, they went out, along with the stove. Gas started pouring into the house. What a disaster. The gas supply must have been interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard, so the flames went out. I'm afraid I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all, I said? Hmm. So by disconnecting, by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves connected to the same network of pipes. And then, when the gas starts flowing again, it starts silently seeps into the room. So Narahodo, I think perhaps... Yes, this is almost certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Juror number three, the fans request that you amend your statement to include the information. Oh, well, if you like, I don't mind. Well, I do. That's our company's secret method of identifying the rogues that try to diddle us. Like I said, madam, it's widely known already. Very well, juror number three, you will abandon your statement accordingly. Yes, my lord. Blow too hard in the gas point and you extinguish everything in the house, and then you're real trouble. I do agree that I can't agree. Watch and deliver around the city and maintain the pipes. Truth be told, it serves out. 
If nothing passed the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation. Is there? I'm a man of logic, having considered all the evidence, the friend must be logically guilty. Okay, I may have to press for more answers. But let's see what happens. Random guess, here we go. Gas also come free. It costs a fortune to deliver around the city and maintains a pipe. Blow too hard in the gas pipe. Objection. Nope. I have to press for more. It could be one of the what it it could be one. No, fool! We're playing the guessing game midway. That's all. Let's see. Objection. Nope. All the evidence you say that's right and there's no room for doubt it's all pointing at the Japanese man with the big mustache says the Englishman with the bigger mustache which means we need to show the man and some new evidence to make him change his mind if only we had that kind of evidence don't worry this summation examination has barely started really perhaps there'll be a shift in the situation to start with though I need to find some way out of this deadlock Okay, we got this, this. Hold it! You, you mean it's poison? That's right. It's happened a tidy few times now. This is most troubling indeed. It's always days like this one. When I don't get any new wages, I get in tea time, see? And I see her doing it, my wife. She gets the devilish look on her face, and she sips some white powder into my cup. Make sure it's not sugar. And you drink it anyway? I was brought up proper. I was, if someone gives you a cup out, you drink it. And what happened to you? What did it taste like? It was gone off, I believe you me. Salty as hell. Salt. She gave you salt in your tea. And I think perhaps what your wife put in your tea was salt. Oh, so, so she doesn't even care enough to poison me properly, eh? Believe, unbelievable. Let's move on, please. If nothing passed the victim's lip, there's no explanation, is there? Him and the younger one. Does that mean that if the victim could be shown to have ingest something else, you would change your leaning? Huh? Sorry? What's that now? Oh, um, I was just saying if the victim did actually eat or drink something on his. What's the matter with you? Sorry? I said, if nothing else passed the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Haven't you been listening to me at all? I feel there's an English expression about a pot and a kettle that's appropriate here. Compared to the other jurors who don't even appear to have anything to say about the case at all, it would seem that the elderly gentleman has been listening to the proceedings far more intently. I suppose that trouble is... He has selective hearing. Exactly, but still, the juror may well be the key to the breakthrough that we desperately need. Okay, we got the thing that we need. So we got it. Ah, uh, this is hopeless. There's no way for me to appeal to these people. I know what to do. Oh, wait a minute, no! I don't want this. I was just spamming the button. No. Get out of it, get out of it, get out of it! That's enough. Why do I need a refresher? We just went through this. Shut up, move it.
protection. Objection! Objection! My lord, this is the exciting new forensic technique developed by the greatest detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. It reveals all the places that Mr. Shamster touched in his room. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, that's black magic, isn't it? <sighs> well, if anyone could invent something like this, it's the great Sholmes fellow, that's for sure. I agree. This mount's addition of injuring thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skin prints in many places that we would expect. On the table, on the costumes... However, Mr. Shamsha also to have been touching some very unexpected place in his room. For example, here. Around the hanging picture there indeed, multiple hems appear to be visible. Well, I wonder, could he have been appreciating the artwork perhaps? At first, my colleagues and I thought the same. However, imagine standing with your hands with where those prints are and you would find yourself directly in front of... In front of? Ah! I don't believe it. The gas lamp. Though the reason why is immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shamspear 
has regularly been standing with his hands to the wall in front of that lamp. Right, we have. What have you been up to, you nut? I asked the court, recall the juror number four's earlier statement. Me? What did I say? You said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now, if you'll recall no, no, juror number three's statement. What? Me now? When the gas worker who visited his home blew with too much force in the pipe, it caused all the lights in the gas stove to go out, and gas to start leaking into the room. Obviously, that incident was, in, was an accident. However, the simple fact is... If Mr. Shamster were to have blown hard into the gas pipe here in his room, he could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Objection! Willis, I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during a summation examination. I must toast my learned friend's utter disregard for the letter of the law. What is the meaning of this, Lord Von Zykes? This curious photograph of whatever it is presented by the defense, the so-called skin prints, clearly that cannot be accepted as many form of usable evidence in this case. But, but it's exciting new forensic technique developed by a great detective. It's nothing. A mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Uh. Uh, certainly even research of this nature by the esteemed Mr. Sholmes cannot be recognized by the court as formal evidence. But... Please, my lord, if I may, Mr. Sato, it was not the defense intention to submit the skin prints as formal evidence. We merely wish to present the results of the great detective's investigation of the scene, as a tool by which explain a possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. And, if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never learn the truth behind those mysterious handprints that everyone has seen. I don't believe we can allow that to happen. I'm sure the jurors would agree. Hold it! You're right. Whether those strange handprints are a significant clue or not, it's down to us to decide. Juror number three? And here we go. Well done, Mr. Naruto. It's just one more juror changes his mind. Mr. Natsuki's trial will have to continue. Thank you, Mr. Sato. I couldn't have done it without you. Oh no, it was you who died up as a clue after all. This is very much your success. Why, Mr. Shamspear? You seem to be losing your composure. Just one more juror, Mr. Naruto. He can do it. Very well, continue. What? So who are we gonna put it up against? So we can use those two. Gas can come for free. We can use him. I have no idea who we're supposed to press. At this point, I'm just gonna play the guessing game. If, I, if having considered all the evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. Objection. 
I tried all three. I already pressed all three. So what exactly am I supposed to figure out here? We can't use the other three for whatsoever. So who... Hold it! All the evidence you say. That's right. And there's no room for doubt. It's all pointing the Japanese man with the big mustache. We went through this already. Nothing changed. Skin. It's an exciting new forensic investigation technique developed by the great detective himself. The numerous handprints on the wall are clearly out of the ordinary. And if Mr. Shamstrom had indeed put his mouth to the gas pipe at the night in question, it can't be not be denied, but a possibility that there was poison. Well, yes, I don't deny it's playing on my mind. But as the prosecution rightly says, we should pay no heed to the acceptable forms of evidence. And besides, yes, even if the fellow has been up to some mischief with the gas pipe a dozen of times before, it doesn't mean he got up to the same shenanigans on the night in question, does it? Oh. If you can't make your case better than that, I'm afraid I can't change my stance. Hmm, you do make a very bad point, sir. What? Hmm, that's true. Perhaps I was a little hasty. No, 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 wait! Look, you got your chance here, haven't you? So it's time to prove your theory. If you, ha you and your Japanese cohorts can, that is. Just leave our nationality out of this, please. If we can't subsidize our position, I'm afraid our jurors can't change their minds before the very, very will change them back. What can I do? Is there anything more proof I can give here? Can I show that Mr. Shamsford really did blow the gas pipe that night in question? Supporting testimony? I would say a supporting testimony because we have another person that can do such, such thing. But are we allowed to bring someone in? A supporting witness? No, in truth, I don't have evidence to support my theory. However, there is witnesses' testimony that substantiates it. What? Testimony? This is incredible. Who's testimony? Yes, it's all connected. Everything is linked. A person whose testimony revealed details about the gas in the Garrett Brothers that night, namely, Umbre. Take that! Well, Mr. Foreman, does that? That did nothing. Oh well. But we have the right idea. Oh heck no! I did save it, right? Just take us back. I chose the boss man because he's been watching us, everyone. So who's left? Take that! Obviously, I'm talking about the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsubi himself. The defendant? At the very beginning of the proceedings here in court yesterday, Mr. Natsubi made the following. My lodgings, there's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings. Even on a fateful night, it happened when I returned from Mr. Shamsby's room. I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed, but before long, the stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me. On the night in question, the gas in the defendant's room went out, so I asked the court, was that a mere coincidence or not? Good golly! So that Shamsby fellow blew air into the gas pipe to make the man's stove go out on purpose. Now hold your horses there, what would he have to do for that? Four men! What the? What is a man? We cannot allow judgment to pass well as the, this doubt remains. It's true that I don't have conclusive evidence yet, however, you must surely agree there is more to the case than meets the eye.
Fair enough. Like I said at the outset, I'm a man of logic first and foremost. Yeah! That's four jurors leaning towards not guilty, my lord. We've overturned the decision. Therefore, the defense calls for the trial to continue. As the defense has rightfully indicated, the summonation examination has concluded with a majority of the jurors alternating decisions. Here we go. Therefore, the jury's opinion is conflicted in accordance with the law of the land. Here by the continuation of the trial. Mr. William Shakespeare? My lord, how can I thy humble Shakespeare serve thee? What say you response to the various revelations made during the summation examination? So God mend me. I do solemnly swear. I recall aught of either the lamp or the pipe. Well, your handprints have made a tidy mess all over the wall there. How you explain that, eh? Thanks. I am done with this. The dignity of the great courtroom has been solely enough already. Juror number five. Ooh, me? As I went to some pain to point out already, a print from the self-professed detective story has no place in British court of law. As such, whether or not this man did indeed stand before a gas lamp with his hands against the wall remains at this time unestablished a conjecture. You would all do well to remember that. Objection. But the prosecution must concede that it would be extremely simple to verify. Just order them out order them out of the gas pipe feeding the lamp in Shakespeare's room to be examined. If there are traces of poison Objection. there what appears to be extremely simple is my Nipponese friend's mind. You will recall that in order to check for the presence of the poison in the tea, some remnants of the tea were required. Yes. Therefore, it shouldn't be beyond your wit to imagine that even if poison were to have been spread on the pipe, it would have completely evaporated by now, making analysis impossible. Yeah, I didn't think of that. In any case, counsel, I fail to see what could possibly have motivated the man to do as you describe. Why on earth would this fellow have wanted to blow air into the gas pipe where, where he lived? There's only one possibility that I can think of. And that is... To use the leaking gas to commit murder. To whom? Order! Counsel? Precisely whose life do you propose this man was planning to end? The answer could be simpler. Now we have run the mystery this far. Mr. Shaster wanted to end the life of... Good lord, an unexpected answer indeed. That's right, my lord. I don't know, I just I just did something with no reason. But not to be in self. I have no idea what I was doing. Like I said, I lost all IQ at this point. My brain's fried. I know there's someone who's been complaining of troubles with the gas supplies recently. What? Someone that has trouble with the gas supply recently? Take that! If a gas lamp were to go out, it would be noticed immediately, of course. But a gas stove, on the other hand, could be suddenly extinguished by the killer without anyone noticing. I live around those parts myself, so I know what it's like. I can tell you, trying to sleep without the stove lit is pretty much suicide. You're free to that in no time. Mr. Garadip, the landlord, has a large fireplace in his part of the residence on the top of the floor. In other words, it wasn't the landlord, but a fellow lodger whose life Mr. Shepherd was trying to end. Outrageous! I'm talking, of course, about the defendant. Mr. Natsui isn't the villain in this case. He's the victim that was trying to murder. Objection. The accused is actually the aggr aggrieved. Interesting. However, the fundamental facts of the case remain unchanged. The accused is the aggressor here. What? How can you still claim that? 
Let us indulge your fantasies for a moment and assume that there was indeed poison in the mouth of the gas pipe. The question then arises is who put it there? Who did put it there? The only logical conclusion is that the person responsible was aware of this man's trickery with the gas supply and his intent to kill. Yes, that would indeed seem logical. The assailant were unaware, how would he or she have known the lights to end the gas pipe with poison? So now we must ask, how could anyone know Mr. Chance's murderous designs? You mean to suggest? Naturally, the sole possible answer to the question could be more obvious. Only the man whose life was being threatened could possibly have known. In other words, the person who put the poison on the gas pipe in what was clearly a real retaliatory attack can only have been the accused, Mr. Sukseki Natsume. Uh. Whatever Mr. William Shakespeare may or may not have contrived to do, he was nevertheless the victim of a potentially lethal poison attack. And the only person who could possibly have perpetrated the attack is the accused, Mr. Natsume. Are we going back there again? The defense counsel theorizing has failed to avert suspicion for the accused, far from it. In fact, now the clear motive for the poisoning has been successfully established. That suspicion is greater than ever. Who would you not agree, my Nipponese friend? Uh. How did he manage to turn that around on me so rapidly? Mr. Naruhoto, you must respond! Otherwise, the members of the jury may very well change their leanings against us. And this may be our last chance to gain the advantage! What advantage? Well, it would seem that somebody put poison on the gas pipe in Mr. Shakespeare's room. So we must name the person now, and obviously absolve Mr. Natsumi's guilt. You mean he named the true culprit? I know it might sound impossible, but if we fail to do that, I have no doubt that Natsume's fate will be sealed once and for all. As it happens, one possible culprit does come to mind. The evidence. The poison. It's all pointing to a particular person now. The prosecution calls for the jury to consider their leanings again. I trust you make the correct choice this time, Mr. Foreman. What? Oh, don't worry. We'll know exactly- There is one other person who I believe could have been involved in all this. The true culprit of this crime. A true culprit? A term found only in second-rate novels featuring third-rate great detectives. My Nipponese friend. Well, why not? This farce has gone so long already I see no reason to cut it short before it's disappointing climax. Thank you. Tell us, my learned Nipponese friend. What is your latest theory? Who is the so-called true culprit of this crime? I don't know. If it's not the guy that we said that it's him. I don't know. If it's not the guy... Like I said, I lost my brain cells a long time ago at this point. My guess is this one, but... Like I said, I lost my brain cells. Cause I don't know why I would this guy be, in, be a part of it. Take that! The name of the person responsible for the poison that afflicted Mr. Chancellor is, I believe, Miss Olive Green. Olive Green? What? That was really... 
Well, I was thinking that one, but I went for the hubby first. I do ask feel as though I've heard that name in the recent past, Council, but I don't recall where. Miss Olive Green, the woman from six days ago. The victim, the victim in the recent case of stabbing on Briar Road, an incident for which Mr. Nusby was arrested, I hasten to add. Oh, of course, yes, Miss Green. She was left comatose for some three days, I believe. I hear she regained consciousness two days ago. And I hardly need to remind the court that Mr. Shamps' poisoning took place three days ago. Given that the woman was lying comatose in a hospital for bed at the time, she appears to have rather fine alibi. True, on the night the incident occurred, Miss Green was in the hospital unconscious. So on the face of it, it would seem that she couldn't possibly be responsible, but still. My colleagues and I visited Miss Green in the hospital yesterday. And we found her to be in possession of a bottle of poison. Good gracious, she had poison? And there's another fact that links Miss Green to this case as well. The defense requests that she be brought to the witness stand in order to explain the details to the court. Tell me, Mr. Shamspear. My lord, pray what I be bidding. Are you acquainted with Miss Green? Uh, no, no, never heard of her. Judging by the look of Mr. Shamspear's face, I think perhaps he generally doesn't know her. At least, not by name. As the voice of Her Majesty Prosecution here, I adhere to my word. We will see my Lord Nipponese friends first to its conclusion. I appreciate that. The prosecution requests a short recess, my lord, in order to subpoena the witness and bring her here. Yes, Miss Olive Green. Indeed, my lord. One hour should be sufficient. Very well, I grant the request. Excellent. I hope. The threat has made a most extraordinary accusation, I must say. But at the present time, I feel the prosecution's argument remains largely uncontested. Accordingly, I'm afraid the defendant and his culpability remain the sole subject of this court's attention. Thank you, counsel. We rec reconvene for one hour. Court is adjourned. With that, we'll end the episode right here. Like, comment, subscribe, check out TV, and I'm sending out.